Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about Magic Origins Fetch Land. Now, the Fetch Lands I'm talking about are the Zendikar Fetch Lands. A lot of people feel like they will be in Modern Masters 2 or 2015. A lot of people maybe believe it's in Dragons of Tarkir. Another option would be put it in Magic Origins. And why would we put it in Magic Origins? Well, there is a princess, Nisa. So, Nisa, the last time Nisa, Jace, Chandra, Ugin, um, was it Liliana at that time, Liliana Vess? I'm missing a character somewhere. Uh, who else was a big character? Oh, no, Soren, actually. Okay, that's kind of interesting. But the last time we saw Nisa, the elf, uh, she was defending her home of Zendikar. Now, could Magic Origins be a return to Zendikar? A lot of people say, oh, no, that's not Magic Origins. That doesn't make any sense. There was no Zendikar back in the day. But if Magic Origins is not so much about the core set and Alpha and Beta, and it's about the storyline, then where are these people's storylines set? Like, where are all these planeswalkers? Where, they, where do they come from? What are they doing? And where are they going? And how did they ignite what is it, Ignite the Spark or something? So leave it in your comments below where you guys know a little bit more about each Planeswalker's story and maybe can tie it into why I feel like these they're going back to Zendikar. Zendikar was a very popular set and it had something incredible about it. It was the first time and the only time your booster pack could contain a, you know, a secret treasure. What would be a more epic way because Zendikar is all about adventure and, you know, traveling and adventure. Essentially, essentially, it was adventure time for Magic. And when you look at it, I would love, love, love if the last core set had the first core set's cards. Maybe not reprinted, just as treasures. You know, for how awesome would it be if you're at draft and you just open a Black Lotus and just like, oh my goodness, this... And that would be really awesome because a lot of people were not playing Magic back then, but they've heard about it and, you know, they have, they know about it and they obviously know how expensive those cards are. That's one factor for Zendikar. The second factor I feel like we are heading to Zendikar for the Magic Origins is that Zendikar, um, these Magic, these Planeswalkers come from different planes, right? Jace is not from the same plane as Chandra. Chandra's plane is actually pretty much a bunch of douchebags. Like, <laughs> from all the anime and the manga I read and uh, background story, her plane is probably like one of the uh, worst planes to be at. Uh, Jace, um, Liliana um, has a backstory and we know that what her backstory is and we know that her backstory is going to be relevant. But this particular one has a backstory as well. And her backstory is so tied to Zendikar like these guys are all tied to different places, but we don't really know what those places are called or those places are not actually magic cards. Nisa is the only one who was tied to a, a set of lands. And that particular set of lands would be extremely attractive to be printed in a core set. And as Magic has sh shown before, they are not afraid to put expensive cards in a heavily printed uh, set. And that's fantastic. I applaud Magic for that. It's been a long time coming, but you guys finally get it. That you want to put good cards into put good cards into packs. People will open packs. Most of those people open packs will be casual players. Uh, from to my knowledge, MTG Finance does not enjoy opening packs. Uh, even if you post anything online, hey, should I buy packs or singles? 99.9% .9 of the posts that you're going to get back are singles. Are you a dummy or something? Like, no, no, no one should open packs. And that's another issue I have, but that with, you know, MTG Finance trying to make a lot of money and not really enjoying the game and not, but that's another issue I'll save for later. So when you have, you, when you have, you know, a planeswalker so tied down to a planes that's so popular and with that secret treasure element, you can secret treasure not just Alpha Beta, you can secret treasure every single set. There could be Tomogoyfs, there could be Bobs, there could be uh, Vendillion Clicks, there could be all types of awesome cards. 
um, throughout the Magic timeline, and the only time they've ever done that was when they went to Zendikar. How epic would that be? Uh, secret treasures of new Zendikar, but instead of just the extremely valuable cards, we will have one slot for one card in Magic's history that made a difference. Uh, it could be a Wild Mongol. I would love to see Wild. I mean, if I open a pack, and you know, let's say you cannot draft a card, you just get to kind of keep it. And I got Wild Mongol. Although it's a common, it just reminds me. Oh, Jackal Pup. Jackal Pup is amazing. It just reminds me of a really cool time in Magic and a really cool time in my life. And that's definitely a way to retro. You know, right now, every single card game, every single sports memorabilia and whatever, like sports cards, retro is in. Like, it is so in right now. And that is the perfect way to do it. Let's go back to Zendikar. Secret treasure time.